like to say good morning to everyone. And uh, it's truly good to be here. Uh, I always enjoy when I get a chance to be guest speaker to Emmanuel. Amen. Amen. Uh, God is good. Amen. Uh, I, um, thank you everyone for praying for me last week. Uh, uh, I, have, I almost made the church. In fact, I came twice. And I turned around and went back home. Uh, uh, I was dehydrated. I didn't realize that's what was going on. But I had spent, spent too much time out in the sun and it caught up with me. Yeah. Uh, Sunday morning, so uh, so but I appreciate everyone caring on um, and thank you so much for your prayers and and since I'm past 25 now, I just have to watch that a little carefully. <laughs> uh, yeah, past 25, 35. <laughs> amen, amen. But um, but I'm um, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be here. I'm uh, gonna try to. Uh, yeah, let's see. My wife is out of town. She's at a family reunion. Uh, I was supposed to go, didn't make it. So, um, so, so I need a timekeeper. So I need someone. Someone, you guys, okay? I don't want to. <laughs> I got a lot to say this morning, and a short time to say it. So, uh, so I um, so let me get on to the word of God. I don't to waste too much of my time. Turn with me to the book of Ezekiel. Book of Ezekiel. Invite your attention to Ezekiel chapter one, and um, follow with me. I'm probably going to jump around a lot of passages, but uh, something we're probably not real familiar with. We are, but we're not. Uh, so I'm going to read two more passages, and I'm going to wood. And it says Ezekiel uh, chapter one, verse four. It says, and I looked and I saw a windstorm coming out of the north, and the first cloud with flashing lightning, uh, and surrounded by brilliant light. The center of the fire looked like glowing milk, and the fire uh, was what looked like four living creatures. In appearance, their form was that of a man, but each of them had four faces and four wings. The legs were straight, the feet were like those of a calf, uh, gleam, uh, like bronze, like burnished bronze, and under the wings on their four sides, they had the hands of a man. All four of them had faces and wings, and their wings touched one another. Each one went straight ahead. They did not turn as they moved. And don't forget that part. Let's get down to verse 15. It says that I looked at the living creatures and I saw a wheel on the ground beside each creature with his four faces. This was the appearance and the structure of the wheels. They sparkled like crystal light, and all four looked alike. Each appeared to be made like a wheel in a second wheel, or as one version would say, that was a wheel in the middle of a wheel. And as they moved, they would go uh, in any one of four directions the creatures faced. The wheels did not turn about as the creatures went higher. Their rims were high and awesome, and all four rims full of eyes all around. Now I skip down to verse 19. It says, and when the creatures moved, the wheels besides them moved. And when the living creatures rose from the ground, the wheels also rose. Uh, whereby the spirit would go, they would go, and the wheels would rise uh, along with them because the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. All right, and I'm gonna stop right there. Uh, and uh, probably going to if I was out, I'm probably going to jump around. Uh, uh, and I want to talk about this morning, uh, the wheel in the middle of the wheel. Yeah. All right. We, uh, we have been in church a long time, sung several songs, and you've heard uh, a Baptist preacher too. Uh, he'll tell you, he's a wheel in the middle of the wheel. Everybody heard that expression before? Yeah. Um, and so uh, I guess the Lord had me to sit down one day and just to, just to really ask myself this question, what does that really mean? You know, what, was he, what was being said by uh, he's a wheel in the middle of a wheel? And so uh, so I want you to watch the time because it's, it's, a, it's, it's quite complex. It really is. It's, it's, it's a 
complex subject. And so in order to understand, I kind of got to go back a little bit. So follow along with me. Um, you got to understand, first of all, that, that this, of course, was in the Old Testament. And in the Old Testament, uh, the Old Testament saints, so to speak, was moving from judgment to hope. Um, they, this was a time of judgment for God's people, uh, and they were looking forward to the hope uh, of the coming Christ. We, on the other hand, uh, are privileged to be at the point in life where there's hope, but we're moving to judgment. You see the difference? Yeah. They, they, they were being judged, but they had hope coming down the road. We, on the other hand, have already seen the hope. And yet, the only thing we have to do now is to grab a hold of the hope and, and avoid the judgment. Um, but what was getting ready to happen here was God was getting ready to remove his spirit from the temple. He was coming again. Um, and so, so this whole thing about the wheel being in the wheel in the middle of the wheel is all about God is getting ready to come back. Now you gotta get this. He's getting ready to come to his temple, grab his spirit, his kind of glory, if you will, and he's getting ready to take it on back up to heaven. The temple had gotten just that bad. Amen. Now this is not a judgment sermon, so don't, don't think it's going to be gloom and doom because it's, uh, it's a hope in here. But, but, but it reminds me, uh, a few weeks ago, we were, uh, my wife and I uh, were in Canada and uh, moved to Montreal and had a wonderful time. But the, one of the nicest things about uh, the area, the hotel that we were uh, staying at, was right down the street from the Cathedral of Notre Dame. Um, and, and we were about four blocks away. And you know, me being the preacher and all, I got to, got to see this, got to see this site. So we walked up about four blocks of the street and it was absolutely magnificent. It has to be one of the greatest structures that's, that's ever been built. Oh, it's just, a, it's never seen a church like this. Never seen a church. However, one peculiar thing about this church, you just couldn't go in. Couldn't go in. Church, beautiful church, huge church, but you couldn't go in. I'm sorry, I wasn't quite right. You had to pay to go in. to see the whole church, you had to pay again. So you, in order to, to go into this church, you had to pay twice if you wanted to see the whole thing. Right. Now me being the economical guy that I am, we all pay once. <laughs> $30 a person was enough money for me to see all that I needed to see. Yeah, $30 a person to get into church. So we went we sit down and it is the most beautiful building on the inside of the house. Oh, it was that it must have taken a hundred years to be in this church. Every single detail in that church is perfect. It's built to perfection. I mean, every square inch is a work of art. You can just go to any corner, any spot in the ceiling. Uh, the only, per only part of the building that wasn't perfect near perfection was the floor. Other than that, it, it must have taken a hundred years to build this church. So we got in and, you know, who paid my $60? <laughs> so I'm getting ready to learn all about this church life. And so I sit down, and they got pews just like, you know, got wooden pews just like any other church. So we sit there, and we wait, and all of a sudden, this voice comes over, 
the, 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 the lounge speaker and said, sit back and enjoy the show. That was it. And evidently they hired somebody from, from, from out of uh, 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 Orlando, a uh, 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 Disney. Because this was the most beautiful laser light show you have ever seen in your life. And every detail of this church just, just came to life. Lights were everywhere, and in all the, they, they had 12 statues across the, the front of the church, one for each apostle. And, 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 and then they had Jesus on the throne at the very top. Absolutely beautiful. Lights going everywhere. And then 20 minutes later, they stopped. And you know what they said? Thank you. I hope you enjoyed the show. Please exit to the back. That was it. Nothing about the church. Nothing about God. Nothing about Christ. They didn't even talk about Peter. All they said was, please exit to the rear of the church. I hope you enjoyed the show. Let me reframe this. They had kicked God out. He was gone. The church was just a show and a money-making mechanism. That was it. And maybe that's why I ran across this because the exact same thing was going on back during this particular time. The church was just a show. That was it. And God says, uh, I'm going to have to come and remove my spirit from the Ark of the Covenant. You remember the Ark of the Covenant, right? I won't spend time going over there. You remember that. Remove my spirit. Now, if you're around me a lot, you'll hear me say something. You know, I'll have people saying that I'm old now, so I can say I can look stuff. You know, if you ever figure out why something happened, what would make all the sense in the world? Right. Yeah, if you ever figure out why is something that's happening in your life, what would make all the sense in the world? Now, I'm not saying what is going to be right, but if you know why it's happening, it'll make sense. Amen. That's one of those principles I live by. So I want to tell you, I want to show you in Scripture why God was getting ready to remove remove his his um, um, his glory from the temple. So back back up if you will real quick to Ezekiel chapter 8. We'll go forward to Ezekiel chapter 8. Everybody still with me? Yeah. I'm trying to move pretty fast to here so we can get to this wheel. Here is why can you can you hear me? Oh scripture oh uh, Ezekiel chapter uh, uh, 8, verse 5. I'm sorry. Ezekiel 8 and 5. And so, God is getting ready to come. And, and, and so, uh, the angel said, said, said to me, he said, Son of man, look forward to the north. And I looked. And in the entrance of the north gate of the altar, I saw this isle of jealousy. Now, what that means was, that in the temple of God, they had set up a, 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 an idol to Ashkelon. Yeah, y'all, y'all heard me talk about Ashkelon, right? Okay, let me let, let me break it down. Ashkelon. Let's see if I can get to you this way. Don't raise your hand. I'm just going to ask the court. Anybody ever been to the phone? <laughs> <laughs> you've been to the party, raise your hand. Stop being funny, you got a problem. <laughs> they got a pole. 
got a car. And they say I haven't been to the car. Passed by there. But I understand. <laughs> they got a pole. They slide down the pole, right? <laughs> Who been to the car? <laughs> and that is from the worship of Ashcroft. They had stopped worshiping God at the temple and they had set up a shrine or a pole to Ashcroft in God's house. God said, I, I, I cannot dwell in the house of another God. He said, matter of fact, he said in the first commandment, I'm a jealous God, right? And so they had set up a God of jealousy and you cannot serve God and, and the pole at the same time. I said, uh -uh. I can't do that. Everybody with me? Number two. I'm going to make it to three. Number two, it says in Ezekiel 8 and 6, and, 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 and I wish I had this time, it, it, the human is, he says, it says to me, son of man, Come over here and see what they're doing. He's like, you ain't, you're not going to believe this. It says, they are doing the other, utterly detestable thing in the house of Israel has done. These things will drive me far from my sanctuary. But you will see the things that are even more detestable. He says something worse than that. In verse 7, and I like this, he says, Then he brought me to the entrance of the court, and look, and I saw a hole in the wall. And he said to me, son of man, now dig into the wall. So I dug into the wall and I saw a doorway there. The church had become a hole in the wall. Now y'all don't know what a hole in the wall is. <laughs> That's what it is, y'all. You know what a hole in the wall is. <laughs> Back in the day, I used to play at the band. Back in the day. <laughs> and we planted every hole in the wall in the state of Alabama. Right. That's where the branch came from. That hole in the wall. And he says, So I went in and looked, and I saw betrayed all over the walls all kinds of, of crawling things and detestable animals and all the idols of the house of Israel. And in front stood 70 preachers. And Jeshurun, son of Zaphan, was standing among them. He says, there were 70 preachers in the hole in the wall, in the door of the church, and they were doing detestable things. They say, amen, preachers. Amen. amen. God always, he always started with leadership. He says, and, 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 and you go and read a little further, and he says, I, I, I'm, I'm going to stick a pen in this, because they are hiding behind the wall, the hole in the wall, and they think I can't see it. Right. How can we hide from God? How can we hide? And see, here was the thing that the, the temple had become a show. Had become a show. God looked through the hole in the wall. I got to stop here for a second. My head's sweating now. I, 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 wouldn't, I, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't ask this question. If God peeped in the hole in your world, what do you see? I got a hole in my wall too, so I'm talking to myself. Amen. Amen. Remember now, you know our thoughts. Amen. You know our intents. No, I actually. He, he, he pointed out. He says, I, I want them to understand I know everything. Yeah. I know everything. And that was the third thing, but I didn't spend much time. The women were mourning over Tamar. That was another item. The women were mourning over. I, I didn't spend much time. And the last thing is, they, in chapter, in verse 16, they had turned their back on the temple, and they were bowing down to the east, to the to, to a sun god. Oh, it was bad, wasn't it? Turned their back on God.
And God says, I got to remove my spirit. So do you understand why he had to pull his spirit out now? That was a why. That was a why. So, so when we found out why, so now we go to the next question of how. And so go back to chapter one when we read in the text. Everybody still with me? I know I told you this was quite complex. Okay, so God comes up in this, 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 uh, in this chariot, so to speak. And God is coming to handle this business person. And he comes, and, and, and there's these creatures that we talked about in chapter one, uh, uh, the cherubim. And they had wings. And underneath their wings, there were hands like men that, 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 that came out, uh, uh, came out from the, uh, came out from the, under the wings. And, and, and it was like God was on some type of cherub. Uh, if you kind of picture this in your mind. And, and, and so God had came down himself. He says, I am the one that put the, my glory in the temple. Then I will have to be the one to pull the glory out of the temple. All right. And so this thing was spectacular. It was, it was like nothing we'd ever seen before. And, and what made it so different, I mean, the, 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 a couple things about it, what made it so different that this, 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 I guess lack of a better word, this, this divine chariot that was coming with God on it to remove his spirit from the temple, it had wheels on it. Now I'm into the wheels. It had wheels on it. But there was something different about these wheels. Normally you would have a wheel that would be on our axis. You know you have your wheel attached to the, to the axle and the wheels turn, the axle is straight, but the wheels turn. But this was different. These wheels had a wheel in the middle of the wheel and the wheel was turned around on the wheel. That didn't make sense to Ezekiel. And so my question is, and, and, and what I really want to get to, why wheels? Why, out of all the pictures he could have used to, 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 to show what was going on and why he was going to remove his, his spirit, why did he use the wheels? Well, I'm glad you asked. Number one, he wanted them to get it in a way that had never been told before. He wanted to show them a picture that they had never seen before, that, that, that yes, I'm in, in, in control, and I want you to understand that I'm God, and I run everything. And see, the thing about the wheels were, not only were the wheels, in the, uh, there was a wheel in the middle of the wheel, there were eyes all around the wheels. And so God wanted them to understand First of all, I see everything. I, 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 I'm the omnipresent God. I'm the omniscient God. There is nothing that goes on in this universe that I don't know anything about. And I want you to understand this. When you see the vision, I am God and nothing gets past me. Now that may sound like a, like, like a speech of judgment. But see, you know, there's some things in my, in, in my house I'm going to talk about my house. I'm not going to talk about your house. There are some things in my house I just don't understand. You got some stuff in your house that you don't understand? I'm going to take that thing a step further. I got some people in my house that I don't quite understand. Amen? Amen. Don't say that for Don't say Don't say that. Don't say that. That was going, amen, so folks in my house too. <laughs> <laughs> There's some people in my house that, 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 that I don't understand. And, 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 and so the God was telling us, he, he, by the way of the middle, I understand the un understandable. I got it. Yeah. Did it come out right? Yes, I understand. I'll say it one more time. I understand the understandable. And I see all. See, the reason we can't understand everything that goes on in our house, the reason we don't understand everything that goes on outside of our house is because we only see part of it. Amen. Amen. But we have a God that knows all and sees all, and because he knows it all and sees it all, he understands it all. Amen. So how did that help me? I don't have to understand everything. And let me, let me, let me 
hurt some feelings. You know I got a hurt feeling one, one time, really. Really about to go sleep on <laughs> I don't have to be in control of everything. How can you be in control of everything when you don't want to understand everything? How can you have the answer to everything when you just don't see everything? Everybody there? Oh, I want you to see this. This is important. It says, And the Lord said to him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and put a mark 
on the foreheads of the men who sigh and cry over the abominations that are done within it. Oh boy, I can preach a whole other sermon. This. He said, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go and put a mark on the foreheads of all of my folks. That sound familiar? Revelation scholars. He said, I want you to put a mark on my mark, on their forehead, my mark. And when you go through the city and create whole chaos, everybody who have a mark on their head, Sister Cole guy, everybody who have a mark on their forehead will be spared. So no matter how chaotic the chaos, if you have a mark, on your head from the Lord, the chaos will go around. No matter how bad it seems, no matter how much you don't understand it, no matter how uh, uh, unbearable the situation is, if you have a mark on your head, God can take the chaos and turn it into a blessing. Amen. Why? Because he's not an ordinary God. He's not the God of the Church family, I don't understand. Some people, I don't understand. 